get your life back to normal. Lonnie with Restore It, Restore It, Restore It, Restoration. Welcome to another edition of the Service Guys podcast. I'm your co-host, Ruel Abadam. Uh, behind, I'm the man responsible for all the technical difficulties leading up to getting this thing recorded. And on the <laughs> other end of the... <laughs> And on the other end of the recording is our good friend, our service professional, Lonnie Beecham. What's up, Lonnie? How you doing, Ruel? I blame I'm good. you. It's always all your fault, the issues we've had. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just the beginning. Wait, there's more. <laughs> yeah, this time I don't... Last time uh, when we were recording... Just a, a bit ago, it sounded like you were doing dishes or something. Uh, I don't hear that this time, so yeah, should I be was, good. I was, I was fishing for uh, for platters and stuff. I was looking for something. So yeah, here we are. I can't even remember the last time we recorded and what that episode was. Yeah, I think it had to do. It's been a minute. With, yeah, I think it had to do with uh, why folks should hire someone like you mm. yeah we were talking about my rolodex of phone contacts and and uh, you know yeah my relation leveraging my relationship to help out your your uh disaster situation that that's what we yeah. talked about there you go yeah i thought it was a good chat i thought it was a good good insight into your world the, the business side and the networking side and all that good stuff not sure what yeah. we're going to talk about today but uh we'll figure it out yeah, do you got a list of topics? Um, well, we'll 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 I'll start off with something, and then we'll see if it leads you into uh, you know some more informative you know prototype stuff. But uh, what I have on the top of my mind, and it's nothing like a major cleanup. It's more like a pet peeve and a complaint, and I think I'm not the only one who has this this problem and it's um loading the dishwasher <laughs> oh yes yes so, my wife and um, i have a debate every night oh really okay well let me start off with what my pet peeve is with it um it's you know my thing is there's a source of 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 water and and mixture of water and soap that that is responsible for getting your pots and pans and dishes and stuff clean and my belief is that it tends to emanate from the center or directly above or, or directly below depending on the model but when you take plates and you put them up flush up against each other and spoons that are identical and you put them up against each other or you have dirty plates facing flush against the wall the inside wall of the dishwasher how the heck are those things going to get clean? You got to be mindful about how you live in the dishwasher. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. yeah. Age old debate. Do you put the silverware down or do you put them up? I think putting them up makes more sense, but then you got to oh. finger them when you pick them up by the eating utensil side of things. So, yep. And plate. And I, I don't care. I don't care what model you have. I still rinse off my plate. There you go. That was like if you have if you have a chicken wing bone stuck to a plate, how are you going to expect that to get eliminated in the unit, right? It'll get off the plate, but then if you may not see that, it's just going to be sitting for days, weeks, and months at the bottom of your dishwasher, and you think that it's going to dissolve and magically go away. Yeah, <laughs> eventually I'm, maybe. I'm lazy when it whenever I get home. I don't want to have to clean out the trap that catches all the food debris junk and i'd rather <clears throat> rinse it down the down the sink let the disposal handle it first you yeah, scrape off yeah. the big the what you can into the trash can then you rinse off the small stuff down the disposal and then you put put it in there my wife and i have a debate the way our dishwasher rack is configured you're supposed to put the bowls in uh right to left well she puts them in left to right well then she can't ever get <laughs> and, and, you're, and you're supposed to stack them up on you know basically overlap them on each other with the bowl mm -hmm. side facing left well she she puts them in the correct 
direction, but she goes from left to right and she can only get like three bowls in there. And then she's the dishwasher's full. And I look at it, it's like, no, it's not. <laughs> There's eight or 10 places to put a put bowls and and you got all of them taken up with three or four of them you're you're supposed to go this way and she whatever it doesn't matter it's like yeah it does look (laughs) we and i fix it rearrange it boom i got three taking up three spaces now we got room for the other however many slots for bowls that we have (laughs) so anyway that's that's part of being married man um, I don't know, man. Like I'll, I work with with people, grown adults, responsible positions, you know, and and they'll talk about how they basically have anxiety when it comes to loading the dishwasher. And I, and I'm like, are you serious? At your age, you're freaking out about being able to load a dishwasher. Someone must have been really upset at them at one point in time. <laughs> you just don't want to. <laughs> Can you imagine what went on in that household? Well, no, I don't want to. Serious yeah. abuse right there. Okay, I guess that didn't lead anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. You really don't have any topics, do you? Um, I'll come up with something, and then I'm just gonna have to do some creative editing to make it all seem like we're not we're not stuck at this point. Well, uh, but <clears throat> let me help you out here. So I was having a conversation with a friend of mine yesterday or the day before. I can't remember. My days run together really bad. And they were telling me that they are going to paint uh, their bedroom wall. And um, and they were asking me how to, how to go about doing that. And they did not know that you can tint the primer. And uh, I just assumed everybody knew to tint the primer. So, you know, um, and yeah, do you, do you know what the purpose of a primer is for 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 painting? Yeah, it's that base layer so that uh, you basically have a neutral um, uh, can, a surface to to work with when you want to put color over it, something like that. Yeah, and it also it well the the primer actually bonds to the substructure better, and it gives uh, a, a a surface that the paint will stick to better. Gotcha. But uh, the, also the other purpose of uh, primer is, is, like, I only, whenever I buy stuff, I, I only want the best of the best. Um, the best primer is called Benz, but you don't need to get that. Uh, for everyday general residential painting, uh, just a good old-fashioned kills, the, the white kills. Um, that, and if you paint it, if you paint kills on the wall, you know, everybody likes these vibrant colors, deep, rich colors, you know, bright pinks or deep maroons or bright blues or, you know, navy dark colors or whatever. So the purpose of the primer is to hide that, you know, whatever, if it was bright pink and now you're going to go to blue, uh, you can't just paint blue over pink. Then you get the, you know, you get the, old, you know, the third grade color wheel art class, you know, situation going on, you know. Yeah. So if you, if you paint it with a with a primer, then you you know you got a clean slate to work with. Well, I was tell, telling this friend, I forgot what color they were going to paint, um, but I was like, well, if, if if you go to the store, you can tint. You know, let's say you're on dark navy blue. Well, if you tint your primer, uh, the same base color that you're going to paint the wall, that it, it'll go on a, as a flat, you know, navy navy blue, but then when you put your your um, the, the color you want the dark navy blue or whatever, then it it brings out a deeper, richer color, and you can actually get by with uh, one coat of primer tinted uh, primer, <laughs> or and then you get by with one one coat of paint of the color you really want. It just brings it out a lot deeper. Right? If you really want to get really crazy, you could do two. Um, two coats of other paint that you're painting. So, anyway, I just thought I'd throw that out there. Um, you know, yeah, not, that's, not, uh, not, every, not everyone that's, knows that. I thought everybody, I thought everybody knew to tint your your primer, whatever color you're painting the walls, and um, they're like, oh, I never thought about that. That's a good idea. 
So yeah, there I you never go. thought about, I never, I didn't know that you could tint primer, but I did. And I, and I also didn't know that it would help um, your paint bond better to the wall. Um, but yeah, um, that's good. That's good to know. I mean, the other way to think about it is if you have, a uh, really dark wall and if you don't set a primer and you want to paint that really dark wall white you're going to have to go through so many coats of that white oh, I, to not and get some colors dark. some colors i don't know that you could uh go from a really dark vibrant color to a to a white with i don't know that you can there are some you get a red or a black you know if you uh yeah if you get a black I don't know that you can put enough white paint, the straight white over it without a primer. I don't know. I wonder. So, I wonder uh, if that's this. I wonder if that's the same thing with uh, with hair color. You know, like I've got dark hair, and or you know, if you if you want to go from one extreme tone of hair color to the next, do you do you do a primer on your hair? Well, actually, I know a little bit about that. I know you. I know. <laughs> I know you would. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> believe it or not, some depending on what you're doing. Um, if you're dealing with a pro professional hairstylist, believe it or not, if you if you got brown hair or like if you wanted black, uh, if you wanted blonde hair and you got you know dark black hair, uh, I don't know when to do it. That's what the pro is all about. But sometimes they actually will strip colors off instead of add colors to, to get the, the end result that you want. Um, if that makes any sense. Sometimes I don't know when they will add the, the, the color to the hair and I don't know when they will pull the color off the hair, but they can do that. So I can't talk anymore about that because I don't know. Uh, I just told you everything I, was, I knew about it, but. I, I was getting excited. I'm thinking, wow. You know, do a line for for water damage, and also some tips on how to get your hair colored right. <laughs> well, when when you when you got a mother that's owned a hair salon for thirty years, and and you're forty three years old, you, you you pick up on a few things over time. But I don't know. You know, mom just went to work and did her did her. You know, she did what she got paid to do. So, but I would listen, and people would say, "Oh, I I wanted I want yellow hair. You know, I want." I want it blonde, and I, I remember watching her one time put uh, some stuff on this, this lady's hair that was uh, that was blue, and they were freaking out, saying. And she told them, "Like, I'm gonna put this blue stuff on, and and when when we wash it off, it's gonna be yellow." And well, I, I remember sitting there as a kid, teenager, or whatever. She's you know taking this brush and just coating coating this lady's hair with bright smurf blue stuff and i was like okay this ought to be interesting so i had to stick around at that point and, and the lady was freaking out and mom was like no just just trust me if it if it doesn't work we'll we'll fix it I, i'll fix it <clears throat> and uh yeah turns out yeah it, she did whatever she did however long it took i sat around and uh watched it and yeah the lady went from brown to brown to blonde so that's that's all i know I don't have a clue beyond that. That's fascinating. That's fascinating. And I thought what was entertaining was I was about to interject with, uh, he's applying Smurf, Smurf, Smurf goo or something. And you said it. <laughs> so I had a chance to say it. <laughs> oh, it was, it was, it was definitely Smurf blue. It was, uh, quite entertaining. And I was like, Oh, this is going to be good. Yep. Mom, mom knew what she was doing and it worked out. That's awesome. Uh, so can I tell you about last Sunday? Well, I was going to ask you about last Sunday. Can you tell me about last Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> so I get a, I get a water job and, and probably one of the largest houses I've ever been in. And I work for a very wealthy clientele here in Jeff city, but I was in a town in Columbia, Missouri, 30 miles North, right? Come to find out the, the guy is a, hip and knee replacement surgeon. So um, he has a he has a water leak in his indoor cutting green slash driving range room. He called it my Lucky golf room. Lucky him. 
<laughs> yes. Wow. So he's asking me about, uh, he goes, can you, can you, can you dry out and, and clean my outdoor AstroTurf carpet in, in my house? I'm like, no, no, <laughs> never. I've never dealt with it. This was like, uh, oh, he had like a, uh, uh, what did he call it? The, uh, the hitting, I'm not a golfer, but anyway, he had some thicker stuff and he had some shorter stuff and, uh, this thick stuff was like three inches thick. So it was more like it's supposed to replicate the, the driving range area. That's, that's where they would tee off. And it was yeah. so thick and it, it was made up in such a fashion where you could set your tee in, in this, in, in the green or whatever he called it. But anyway, and then you just set your, you know, set your ball on the tee and take a whack at it. And this room's all computerized and uh, the room was roughly, 40 foot by 30 foot. So, I mean, you're not going to drive it a full 200, 300 yards or whatever, but he, and he had a whole net system set up with that was the spring loaded netting. And um, so, you know, his son, this is for his son. Well, of course, everybody in the family uses it, but his son is a junior pro and um, really into golf. And uh, so he's asking me about all this. I was like, I don't know. I got to come take a look at this because I've never, I've never dealt with this. But I said, I know I can extract water. <laughs> I know how to do that. I just don't know how to talk intelligently about three inch thick specialized outdoor carpet that's in a house that has water in it and under it. And, and uh, so, yeah, next thing you know, was last Saturday or Sunday, I was in there you know, kind of dismantling this netting system that's spring loaded and, and, uh, has black, uh, uh, felt glued and stapled to the wall and, and, um, and, uh, yeah, worked out pretty good. He, uh, he had a, he had water damage on his wall and he said, Oh, we'll dry that. And I was like, all right, great. I'll extract the water. You sign here and give me a check. And then while we were there, he's like, Oh, can you clean my, yeah, I got one spot here. And I have another spot, follow me. And I'm walking and I'm walking and I'm walking and I'm walking. I'm like, oh man, I'm already, I already had like 200 feet of hose stretched out to uh, get to where I was going because I couldn't just drive up to his house. I had to take out uh, a window, you know, take off the screen, take out the window and uh, drag hose through the window to extract this water. And I was already kind of pushing capacity and then we we go another 100 150 feet and turn a corner and walk down a 40 foot hallway huge huge house apparently hip and knee replacement pays very well so uh you know so we negotiated price and and uh i said yeah i'll 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 clean this as long as i can get the hose to it And, and sure enough we were able to i had every bit of my hose i had five i'm sorry 450 feet of hose pulled out to go clean the far end of the, of the, uh, of the house. And, uh, but it was pretty cool. I got to see an indoor driving range with a putting green and had a cup and everything, just like, just like a putting green had. And, uh, that, that outdoor AstroTurf carpet stuff looks just like that Bermuda grass that you, that you, you know, that's always in the, in the whole area or whatever you call it for the golf. Yeah. Yeah. it, It was pretty cool. And it was all computerized, had to dismantle and pull apart a computer. And, and, um, and I don't know what I was unplugging. And I said, don't call me to hook it back up, but I got to move this console here. And, and it has to get out of the way because water was just pouring, squishing out from underneath it. And I said, can't move, you know, I can only move it three inches and I need it out of the way. So, yeah, I got to dismantle a computer system, dismantle a netting, indoor netting wall thing for an indoor uh, driving range and pull up the, the pull the thing out of the flooring for the, I mean, it was bore in the concrete, this, this cup for the, for the green. And, um, that's kind of cool. Kind of neat. Uh, something new every day. Wow. So after all that walking, did you, he's like, I want you to walk with all of your equipment here. That way you can end up eventually needing hip and knee replacement from me. <laughs> well, hey, he even told me I, I lifted, I lift a piece of my machinery and set it somewhere. And he told me, "Well, you just let me know if I ever, 
if you ever uh, need my my help, my services, and I I said, well, did I lift this thing correctly? He goes, no, you did. You did pretty well. <laughs> I'm like, good. Hopefully, if I keep doing it pretty well, I won't have to have a hip or a knee replaced. <laughs> but he, yeah, he offered me his services. It's like if I was ever a dentist, I would and have or have a dentist office. I'll be giving out candy at the end of every visit. <laughs> oh, no kidding! Yeah. So, yeah, I was going to ask you like, what else is going on in your world? But you already started tapping into it. Yeah. Sorry. Well, having a sick mom, as you know, that that takes top priority. So yeah, yeah. Got a few developments you know, in that that range and. And man, it, the system is a, it's just a horrible kick in the nuts. It, it, it is so demoralizing. It is, oh, it's stupid. And then, and then the people that think that, you know, free health care is, is the answer. Oh, trust me. It is not the answer. It is not the answer. It is horrible. It is a horrible situation. But that's neither here nor there. That's a whole other topic. Oh yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, it's it's, <laughs> it's kind of pitiful whenever uh, your mother's only source of income is um, disability from the Social Security office. I found out, you know, they they back, you know, she got they deemed her disabled from two thousand and I, I can't remember. Anyway, she gets on full blasted uh, old age Medicare at the age of 63 next February. So life will be a little bit different and better until, at, you know, after that, but until then, Oh, she makes too much on the Medicaid system in Missouri uh, that now she has a, what they call a spin down. These are all terms I've heard about, but until it hits you, you don't know what it means. Well, I know what it means now. She has to spend $314 a month out of her disability check to get her free quote unquote free health insurance like really and then because she makes too much on disability uh she you know she's getting we, we were getting help from uh the you know state government for food stamps and uh yeah it went from 145 a month to 24 dollars a month like well, what 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 is she supposed to eat for 24 dollars a month they're like, well, God. that's it. Take it or leave it. It's like, well, okay. So we're still buying, you know, so all this GoFundMe money that, that Vinny was, you know, has blessed us with. Oh, it's mm -hmm. going to basically buy toilet paper and food. Yeah. Oh, God. And, uh, yeah, it's the, the system is, you know, and then here's mom. Been a work workaholic, uh, self-employed all her life. She's sick. She's looking forward to the day that she can go, you know, get get better, get done with treatments. She wants to do nothing more than just go back to work. And uh, well, until her Medicaid kicks in, whatever dollar she makes on a W two at least is what she'll have to go to. You know, that's what she'll have to pay pay the Medicare system or Medicaid, sorry, system. Uh, so yeah, if she went and got a job and she made two thousand a month, then she'd have to spend that two thousand dollars a month on at the hospital. It's like, wow, wow, wow. kind of crazy, isn't it? I'm not surprised. It is crazy, but I'm not surprised. Yeah, and I don't want to get political because I'm pretty much apolitical, but at the same time, and when you now, do hear, hear the news system and everybody, you know, Medicaid for all and, and, and free, free health insurance. And, and now we're dealing with, you know, doctors that don't take Medicaid or, uh, you know, they don't have to take Medicare and Medicaid and, and, uh, some do, some don't, and, you know, it's like, wow. And then just think if we're all on Medicaid or Medicare, then I guess doctors would have to take it. But now if you got everybody in the system for free and then everybody gets to go to the doctor for free, and then do you think you're going to get in in any time reasonable? No. I mean, you, you better have a standing appointment every month with your primary care doctor or you're not going to see him for eight months. So, wow. Anyway, sorry about 
puking that information on you. No, that's okay. Um, you know, because the, the 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 deeper we get into into dark places, it's just going to be harder for us to crawl out of it. <laughs> for the sake uh, of the podcast, <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's been many many dark times. <clears throat> yeah, and then when you're the sole caregiver, or the 98% caregiver, and the other two percent is your is your wife, then you know, yeah. It's kind of all consuming, all encompassing, all you know. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I hear. But you. I won't go there. I hear you. I uh, I was listening to a talk uh, at at the office the other day. It was uh, it was on mindfulness. So I work around and I work with uh, with uh, folks in the in the um, um, mental wellness sort of space. Yeah. So. Yeah. A lot of really cool people, and you know, the, the talk had to do with mindfulness and and um, exercises and stuff. And it sounds kind of like you know stuff that you've maybe heard so many times in other health related podcasts. But it it was neat to hear um, hear this information at work because you know that it's people with people it's it's with people I work with. It's you know, and the the context of needing the mindfulness and the self-awareness and the, the self-care is important. And, you know, they talk, they talk about scenarios where, you know, you would sit with a colleague or a manager or a boss or something. And mm-hmm. to be able to, to be able to openly say, you know, start the meeting off with, I am not feeling really great right now. Right. And that, you know, that the people we work with are, are uh, compassionate enough to 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 care about you know to care about that and take that into consideration as they have their conversations because a person who isn't feeling well and and states it um, is at risk of communicating in, in in a way that they ordinarily wouldn't but at least the audience or the other person on the other end would would kind of work through that and and, and be understanding I thought it was important um, there isn't a whole lot of talk you know about workplace stress and home stress and how it all kind of overlaps into one big, you're just walking around one big stress ball. So to get a take from work about how you can manage stuff at work and in your life, it, 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 uh, it's nice. It's like someone opening their door to you. You know, you can walk into a setting and say, I'm, before I begin, I want to start out with three deep breaths, right? And everyone's going to respect that. And I actually applied that recently. You know, I, even though it was a video call, I just said, before I begin, I'm not feeling too hot. And mm. uh, I'm going to start off. I'm going to start off with three deep breaths. And then I'm going <laughs> to say what I got to say. So I thought it was kind of, not coughs, Lonnie. Breaths, not coughs. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I misunderstood you. Um, but, you know, um, I, I say that because, you know, you, you're talking about how life is hectic and stuff and, you know, having to, to, to take yeah. care of your, your very sick mom and, and all that stuff. So there's, and when there's, you're the uh, caregiver, the, the non caregiving family members don't understand what the stress is and, uh, or the guilt, like ever, you know, when I'm not with my mom, even though, you know, it's, time consuming and aggravating sometimes and irritating and frustrating and, and timing isn't always right. Uh, and then when I'm, you know, you know, sometimes it's just impossible to not feel flustered and overwhelmed. And then, uh, then when you get home and you got to switch gears and go be a dad now and a husband, then there's a part of the caregivers that feel guilty for not being with the sick family. <laughs> That's lonely, bored, needing, you know, human interaction, you know, just needing love and support. And then, then I feel guilty when I'm not with my mom. And then I feel guilty when I am with my mom, because then I'm neglecting my business or my, or my family, or, you know, it's always every, every moment of my day is either work, family, uh, sick mom, or the business side of her being sick changing, you know, mailing addresses, getting her mail, paying her bills, getting everything straightened out, dealing with Medicaid, Medicare, Social Security, hospital bills, you know, and then, yeah, so the, and I I feel free to say that, you know, whenever 
you know, your family members don't know what you're going through. Um, I don't think my brother listens to this. I told him, you know, when, when we kicked this off, I, I said, Hey, you know how we've been real and I've been talking for years about doing a podcast. And he's like, yeah. I said, well, we, we finally kicked it off. And he straight up says, Oh, what do y'all talk about? Anything good? Or is it just Ruel blowing smoke up your ass telling you how cool you are? Like, oh, okay. So I won't tell you about that one no more. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just me blowing smoke up your butt, Lonnie. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, the non, the non family, you know, the family members that aren't involved with the day to day care, they don't have a clue what, what goes on and transpires and the amount of hours still daily <clears throat> that and i never realized how much mail my mom got till it all started showing up in my p.o box holy crap is there a lot of mail every day there's mail and now there's more mail than what her normal bills are because now it's social services and social security and more medical bills and, and it's like wow my mailbox is filled every day I was shredding documents when when we were on our little hiatus because, you know, all the stuff that is, uh, you know, I just shred everything. If it has personal data, then, then it's it's shredded. I don't want it out there. So. Wow. So, sorry about that. How's your house? You got any any leaky toilet issues? Any any roof issues how's that roof spot coming how's that treating you is it growing well well you know i've uh i've got i've got a i've got a collection of cables uh like uh satellite dish cables that were have been neatly cable tied down the the what, what do you call it the gutter what do you call it the down the down yeah, out down thingy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. just you down know, as that, it was all nice and nice and cable tied. Um, but you know, a lot of time and weather has eroded the 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 strength of those cable ties. And now I've got I don't know, we've got like a bundle of cables just kind of dangling down two star from a two story structure from the roof down alongside the. Uh, the downspout but not attached to the downspout so it's just kind of like depending on how the wind blows it's just kind of like <laughs> tarzan's vines in the jungle <laughs> and, and i, I take it you, you, I, I was gonna say i take it you don't have a two-story extension ladder exactly or the cojones and, uh, to stand on it to do it that's the other i don't have the the the, the nuts to well i have the nuts to get up there but it's it, it wouldn't it it wouldn't be without my nuts wanting to become ovaries. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> you know, go 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 deep in my abdomen and hide. Um, so and let me I guess, you don't want to hire a guy to just do that for you, do you? No, I I'll 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 try and find a ladder somewhere, but I I'll for for, for the time being I'll cable tie what I can reach. <laughs> yeah, I'll stack and you know the garbage what? cart. And really, um, uh, getting a ladder is easy. You can rent a ladder, and uh, that's yeah, easy. Yeah. If you got the intestinal fortitude to stand up on a ladder and climb up there and do it, I'll make a deal with you, Ruel. <laughs> <laughs> I know where this is going. What's the deal, Lonnie? <laughs> you buy me an airline ticket. <laughs> pick me up at the airport. Okay. I will make that happen for you. I'll even provide those zip ties for you. And I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll get a guy in there to do that. If I can't do it, <laughs> if, if I can't get a ladder myself, I, I, I can make that happen for you. And it would be relatively cheap to get the guy to do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. I'll let my wife know that we're gonna we're gonna be expecting gas. Yeah, and I do expect <laughs> at least a couch. <laughs> and I'm very kid friendly. I love kids, so they don't bother me. I know I can sleep through anything. I've, I've seen pictures of you with babies and kids. You're you're yep. You're you're, you're a teddy bear. Mhm. Mhm. <laughs> so yeah, you fly me out one weekend. Now it can't be April fifth uh-huh. through the seventh. 
Actually, I do need to talk to you offline about my date I have in Nashville, April 6th. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm doing some uh, training for a software thing that I, that I, that I have. And what it is, is uh, I'm going to get set up with online, you know, Facebook um, um, scheduling for carpet cleaning and stuff. Very so cool. am I? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll be emailing you a, a plug in or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I'll either be emailing you or calling you or something from, from that training thing. But uh I'm I'm going to Nashville April fifth, sixth, and seventh, and uh, it, the 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 thing is the Saturday, but Nashville's seven hours away, so it's far enough that I got to get a hotel two nights. So I'm not I'm not doing training stuff from eight to five and then driving home and getting home at two in the morning. You know, I'm not that broke. <laughs> I'll just you know go and enjoy myself, network with the people that are that are there. Um, it's it's all it, it, the software that I have is called House Call Pro, and it's uh, it's my uh, database basically of of customers and email marketing and postcards and and um, you know communication with the customer and notes, and they can sign my waivers and stuff, and and <clears throat> so I'm just I'm utilize I'm going to this little basically marketing training course instead of and they, and they would sit sit with me on the phone but i'm i'm not you know me in fact i think i still need to do something for you for my website you've emailed me a time or two but when i go home i don't i don't have a hot spot on here here's where i'm at i'll just tell everybody we'll we'll just take care of some business whenever while we're on this podcast i don't have a hot spot for my for my laptop um, because I don't do enough emailing that requires immediate emailing out right now from my laptop that I have my estimating software on. So I'll do my paperwork at the office, take it home. As soon as I walk in, fire it up, have it ready to go. All I got to do is connect to the internet. Boom, hit my email. I'm done. Just sit sit down at you know five, six, eight o'clock at night and start you know backing up shit or whatever you're talking you know i don't know it's like yeah i, I just no i i'm not I, i'm not that dude so when i go home it's all it's all family and and rest and you know getting ready for tomorrow basically and kids and dinner and homework and kid running around and all that jazz so yeah sounds like my life yeah yeah, so and I get it. That's that's why I try to squeeze in the time. Uh, uh, I try to squeeze in the time. Um, <clears throat> fortunately, I can um, because I, you know, un unlike you, where you you're doing real work, I'm just sitting in front of a computer. <laughs> you know, so oh, that's could, real work. I could switch, just switch over. It's not my work. <laughs> yeah, you, you should know see? me by now. See? I don't really like internet stuff. I mean, I do, but I don't. Yeah, you see, Trey. I do blow smoke up Lonnie's ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah I, texted that, you, was, I texted you yesterday about them sitting. I thought they were going to be sitting in the uh, San Francisco airport somewhere for six hours. Turns okay. out that they went to San Diego. I don't know the whole story. Uh, San Diego, we don't we don't San talk Francisco. that much. Well, they were gonna. I don't know. I, I get third hand information. I don't talk to my brother that much. Um, and anymore when we do, it's just kind of matter of fact to the point, here's what I need. Here's what I got. Here's, you know, whatever about sick mom. And, and we're in two different worlds and he's in New York and I'm still here in Missouri. And, and, uh, so I didn't talk to him, but anyway, I know that they were ending up in San Diego. That's where they were, uh, going and that's where they're at right now. And, um, anyway, so I was, you know, reaching out thinking he would, you know, if you had the time the they were getting out of the airport for four hours or something and going sightseeing. And then it turned out that they were flying standby somehow and ended up, I don't know why they ended up at the airport in San Diego as long as they were, but that's where their, their end destination was. But I, I don't know. I have no idea. Not a clue. Very cool. But I was thinking that was a, would have been pretty cool if you would have called and texted him and said, Hey, I got a little bit of time. I can meet you here. 
he would have been surprised and and happy to hear from you. Yeah, I would have. You know, if 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 there was enough heads up, and I would have I would have done everything I could to schedule. And I have no idea if it takes you two hours to get to the airport. I mean, you know, mathematically, <laughs> Not logistically, it wouldn't have wouldn't have worked out. But if if it was the airport, you know, if I if I took time away. Uh, uh, for personal matters, you know, to get from where I'm at at the office to San Francisco airport, uh, it's several, it's, it's, it'll be a train station. That'll, that'll be the quickest way I get there. Ah. Um, yeah, but you know, not like, and we know how you park and end up with your, your van towed. Yeah. That, that gets costly when you got to do that all the time. Yeah. That, that blows. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I had to remind you of that if, in case you forgot. Yeah. So if the audience is wondering what the heck are they talking about, uh, so I mentioned I, I re I re mentioned Trey regarding smoking blowing smoke, and Lonnie was referencing a, a, a conversation that we had or a chat message we had outside of this podcast about possibly meeting up with Trey in the San Francisco area. Um, but that didn't happen. So that's what that was all about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One what day, else shaking well, with you? It's just, you know, it's just been really busy with work and, um, and Ambam Studios. Um, work, it's, it's, it's good. It's, it's, we've moved into a new office space. Oh, yeah. And, and even though it's the same company, it's the same work just the location just changes everything. And I don't even, I haven't even settled into a point where I feel comfortable doing a midday run uh, from the office. Um, so it's still, it's still sort of like an adjustment period. Well, is then, it easier for you to get to, to the office or still the same? It's just, it's about the same. It's just the different direction from the, from the same train station I get out of. And it's a really nice space. It's a nice building, and it, it they've, they've uh, we've got tons more space. And you know, I discovered that we actually, as an office, as tenants of the building, we have access to to their uh, their bike room, which has an, uh, lockers and and shower facilities. So oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The the the, the team didn't know about that early on, but I did some digging about how, how all the other tenants um, go about, you know, communicating that they stay at this particular building. And I found out that one of the tech companies had an internal blog about how their new space has, you know, these certain amenities. I'm like, wait a minute, we're in the same building. Maybe we should do so. I looked into that and lo and behold, added another amenity to so team, so you uh, can uh actually shower now after your run instead of stinking yeah. up the office. Yeah, but you know, it's not as fun, I know. <laughs> yeah, I take oh. pride I take pride in my stench. As one man should. Yeah, and you know, and you take pride in yours, I take pride in mine. And it's the reason oh, why yeah. podcast listeners, why Lonnie and I do this from different ends of the country. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I uh I'm fortunate. I don't have to smell or I don't have to look pretty whenever I show up. And if I stink a little bit at the end of the job, it's kind of expected. I mean, we do carry changes of clothes and you know, I do worry about my hygiene, but I do carry deodorant with me, but yeah, when you're just tearing out a basement for 8 hours, yeah, you're you get you get dirty. <laughs> No, no matter how you slice it, you get dirty. Yeah. So uh, remind me, did did you move out of a historic building or into a historic San Francisco building? Into. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. That's always fun. Yeah. I'm glad I'm not remodeling that that old historic building. I tell you what, we're looking at, <clears throat> we're looking at selling our house and buying, moving into another house. I'll never buy another old house. I live in a historic neighborhood in my town and 
And, uh, man, I, I'll never buy another old house. They're cool. They, they, they have unique charm and characteristics that they don't build in the houses nowadays, but just simple things like my front storm door was off standard by a half inch. So you can buy a storm door, you know, for as little as like 50 bucks and, or you can spend good money for like two two hundred and fifty dollars and have a top of the line storm door, right? Well, my storm door is off standard by a half inch and it has to be custom made. So my high end two hundred and fifty dollar storm door turned out to be nine hundred and something dollars twenty years ago. Wow. Oh wow. Uh and then and then since I primarily uh deal with newer construction that actually, you know, the people actually own a square and, uh, you know, uh, you know, the, the walls are square and straight and uh, I don't have the, the, the knowledge to know how to put in a, uh, a countertop that's, you know, one wall starts out, you know, starts out at what, you know, eight, eight feet here, and then it moves into the corner and it's eight foot, uh, and <laughs> you, you know, uh, it's almost nine inches and I, I don't know how to compensate <laughs> for that and and notch out and I, I watch the guys and they notch out the the wall here and they'll recess the countertop and they'll know how to do that they'll, they'll order it like nine inches or eight or I'm sorry nine feet and they'll just cut right there and just kind of slide the countertop I don't know how and when to do that kind of stuff so I can't even do a lot of my own work in my own house I have to hire it out uh, with <clears throat> with my trades trademen friends you know and it's like yeah. man that's humbling to write a check for something you could do if you lived in a newer modern house that has drywall and you could just take a drywall saw and cut a hole i have wood lap plaster and i mean you gotta to hang a picture i, I literally have to get a hammer drill and put a big bore hole in the wall and then put a an anchor into it and, and then put the screw into it to hang the picture and I'm, i tell my wife you gotta be really sure this is where you want because you don't just spackle that and put it back together and paint it you know <laughs> when you gotta put a three eighths inch hole in a wall just to hang put a nail in it to, it's like, so we don't have a lot of pictures <laughs> on our wall but i'll just tell you that you don't just grab a hammer and drive it in there and if you do it'll crack the plaster and you'll get cracks all over the place or chunks will fall off the wall and oh it's a it's yeah, it's a chore and our walls are so textured that my my wife still all these years later she tries to buy these command strips have you heard of command strips oh yeah yeah well and they're great if you got a smooth wall and it's drywall <laughs> and if it does rip a little bit of something off then uh you know, a little spackle, a little touch up paint, boom, you're, you're, you're done. Well, we have such a rough texture on our walls that you, mm -hmm. she will not listen to me. And, uh, she'll, <laughs> she'll, she'll try to put eight of these command strips on this picture on the wall, but it's such a rough texture yeah. that there's nothing to, for the, uh, command strip thing to stick to on the wall and it'll fall down. Yeah. I, I've, I've been sitting on the couch, just literally watching <laughs> this picture just fall glass shatters. And I'm like, Oh, Told you. Wow. <laughs> Maybe if I put more on it, it'll work. I'm like, it, it's going to work, hon. Yeah, we've got the, the textured walls as well. And uh, we, I've used a command strip to hang my son's uh, wooden cheeky mask sort of souvenir that he got from mm -hmm. somewhere. And in the middle of the night, you hear a thunk. <laughs> yep. Like, there goes the mask. Yep. That didn't yep. work. Yep. Oh, so we've talked in circles for almost an hour now. Yeah. Did we and, solve uh, the world's yeah, well, problems yet? Not yet, but uh, I think in order for it to get solved, we've just got to keep creating more problems. And, you know, when we create problems, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll find those friendships along the way. <laughs> You're right. And we'll get, right. Guests on, we'll get guests on the show. Yeah, I need to get back on the horn and start talking. In fact, I got an electrician showing up here any any time now. Um, I need to get some some of these guys on the horn. Yeah, but starting to get into their busy season. And uh, you know, we we can also think about you know maybe having some 
uh, reappearances from past guests. You just sort of catch up. If, uh, yeah, well, that we could. Like a, a, fun, a fun time. Yeah. Very just cool. not Kurt Leopard, though. <laughs> Aw, Kurt. <laughs> yeah. A little him goes you know, a long he... ways. Yeah. All right. Well, just kidding, Kurt. You know I love you. Well, I need to actually be the guy that needs to hustle now in be right. daddy. So wrap us up. We'll wrap us okay, I'll wrap us up. And that concludes another episode, another edition, however you want to phrase it, of the Service Guys podcast. Um, on behalf of uh Lonnie Beecham at Restore it Restorations in Jefferson City, Missouri. I'm Ruah Abadam. Get your life back to normal. <laughs> Get your life back to normal. Lonnie with Restore It, Restore It, Restore It Restoration. Hello? Am I the only one here? Hmm. Ruel and I are having recording difficulties. Hmm. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, you there? I'm here. Are we here? <laughs> Are we together? We're here. We're together. We're holding hands. We're keeping each other uh, warm. I was just shredding <laughs> documents while I was in limbo. We're sharing a cup of coffee. Uh, oh, I need a cup. Right. Well, this has been another Coffee with Heavy Cream production.